Hey there YouTube, this is the Launch Any Reviewer, and today I'm going to be launching a new series known as Silent Film Saturday. Which, every week, or maybe every other week, on Saturday, I will review and analyze a silent film of my choice, or occasionally a viewer will put in a request. Now, some of you are wondering, what about the request reviews? Those silent film requests that you submit are going to be presented on this show. In what order? I have no idea. It's of my own choosing. For example, somebody on my Facebook page requested that I review the Lon Chaney film Mockery, which I personally think is a little underrated. I was going to do it as a request review, then I came up with this series, so if you want to know what the next episode is, it's going to be Mockery. And it's not going to be as a request review, it's going to be as a silent film Saturday review. So now that has cleared up the confusion, let's get all stone-faced about Buster Keaton's The General. Okay, now before I get into anything, I just want to say this is probably where I'm going to do my series in front of my silent film shelf. For those of you who know me, I usually film my footage at that desk. Um, please tell me which location you prefer for Silent Film Sunday. Would you like me to go back to the desk or this shelf? Um, just comment below or comment on my Facebook page even. So, yeah, let's get to this review. Okay, so now we have Buster Keaton's The General, perhaps one of his most famous films. Before I discuss the film's history, let me examine this packaging. This is a Blu-ray title from Kino, who has done a very good job with their Keaton titles. I've only picked up a couple of their... Keaton packages, but from what I've had, they're excellent, excellent examples of great silent films with great, great, great restorations and releases, and that is very important, my friends. Now, I like the cover. You know, Keaton just has his feet up, reading the paper, says the general. Pretty simple, but it works. Now, let's look at the back. Now, uh, this is mastered in high definition from a 35mm archive print that was from the original camera negative. Which, if you don't know what that means, it means that's pretty freaking awesome. Now, let me get into a brief history with The General. I I'm, I will say I am not a Buster Keaton expert. Um, I'd rather say I'm a neophyte on the topic of Buster Keaton, but I will say I've watched a couple of his short films, and I love his short film work. Um, I've seen Sherlock Jr., Three Ages, The Navigator... Um, Seven Chances, The General, obviously. I've also seen the TCM Archives DVD, Buster Keaton, The MGM Years, which has The Cameraman, which actually, along with The General, is probably my favorite Buster Keaton film, surprisingly enough. Um, Spite Marriage and Free and Easy. <clears throat> so, this film was made in 1926, or released in 1926, and... Um, well, all I can really say is it flopped. Not just fine. It wasn't one of those films that was just like, oh, the critics loved it, but, you know, didn't get good money. No, it flopped critically. It flopped financially. And this was basically the point where Buster Keaton lost his financial independence. So, what is all the hype of this film about? Well, the film... Let me just say this. The thing that really makes me fall in love with this film every time I watch it, is the fact that it literally looks like they're shooting this during the Civil War. Like, I almost never think about the fact that this was literally shot in 1926. This was... When I first saw this, I'm like, wait a minute, is it like one of those really old Civil War photographs that you see in the history book? And I'm like, that is so cool. Just the way this film is shot looks like it could have been shot in the Civil War. And... To maybe the untrained eye, or maybe just people who know better, who don't know better, it literally does look like it was shot during the Civil War. So that's actually my favorite aspect of this film. My other favorite aspect is that I like the story. Now, this film, a lot of people could classify this as a comedy, and I will not say it's a comedy. Uh, there were some laughs here and there, but it's not a comedy. It's a more dramatic film with humorous elements. Probably some, similar to something like Shakespeare, except maybe a little more humorous, because Buster Keaton's character is just so open for comedic interpretation, because, I mean, he's the great stone face. But 
In my opinion, I think he's a better actor than Chaplin. But I'll explain that in a future episode of something. But anyway, the film goes that he is the engineer of a train. He loves it. He loves his train, and he loves his girl Annabelle Lee. And he's gonna enlist in the war, but they say, "Oh, you're too important." But they don't tell him that directly. They say he's an engineer. He's too important. So everybody thinks he didn't try to enlist. And that gets him into a dilemma because he loses a girl, everybody, he loses respect from a lot of people. So, and then there's like, a, you know, they steal, the Union spies steal a train. There's a lot of chases, some nice Civil War battles, and some really nice espionage. Buster Keaton sneaks into a house at one point. It's, it's very, it's very interesting. It really holds, holds your interest. Um, and... It's a great film, in my. It's just so good, because it's it's economically told. You know, I think Keaton, Chaplin, and F. W. Murnau, in my opinion, were the masters of title cards. They knew when to use title cards and when not to use title cards. They were masters at it. And some people are like, "Oh, people just put in title cards, just put in title cards." No, 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 no. It's a much more thoughtful process than that. You know, you have to think about where you're going to put these title cards. And you also have to res have respect for your audience. Because your audience might be like, this is Captain Obvious Pants over here. And the only time when you really need a title card is when you're saying, like, the time of day. A certain situation that can't be described in images. Or a certain line of dialogue that can't be put into image. So, I love that aspect of it. And I like that this film goes for the southern perspective but it really doesn't deal with like a race issue because i feel so many civil war films feel they have to have the need to deal with a race issue like for example of course dw griffith's uh monumental film birth of a nation which i'll review this someday and have some things to say on this film but it feels very political birth of a nation and some other civil war films sorry about that uh feel very political or politically driven, whereas the general, it's just about a guy who's on the south, and he loves his train, he loves his girl, and he's just fighting for his country, and it's not really political, it's just, he's doing what he wants to do, um, and I like that, it does, because if they did have a political angle on this film, it would be very distracting to the plot, and this film would be god-awful, in my opinion. Now, is that to say political things aren't, are bad? No, it's just, I think the film is, Kind of like, in a sense, like one of my favorite films, King Kong, where there's no bullshit. I'm sorry, using a strong word there, but it's kind of the truth. Because when you look at a lot of films today, they feel like they have to meander for five and a half hours doing nothing. Whereas this film gets to the point, it tells the story, tells, describes the characters, and uh, it does it well. So, also I guess I have to mention the... The most expensive silent film scene ever. Um, you saw it in the opening. The train collapsing was actually shot. That was actually a real train. That wasn't a model, which is really cool. Um, now, the interesting thing about that scene, it cost, I believe on the one of the supplements it said it cost $42,000, which is a lot of money for 1926 considering that a budget of a film is usually like a million dollars back then. Or not usually, but expensive films were like a million dollars, prestige films. And it, it, the bridge explodes and the train crashes. It comes crashing down. And it's such an impressive sight because it's real. It's happening. And that's the thing with like digital effects. You really don't feel anything because nothing's really happening. Whereas a practical effect... Or something really happening, you get a more emotional, resounding impact because that is what's going on on screen, literally. Um, do I have any criticisms of this film? Not really. I mean, I could criticize the fact that other than Buster Keaton, I really don't remember any of the characters in this film. Like, say what you will about Chaplin and him being the center of attention in his films, but at least... Some of his supporting characters were memorable characters. I mean, I just... I'm not saying... I'm not trying to insult anybody here, but I never found... 
a lot of Buster Keaton supporting characters to be memorable. But maybe that's not the point. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Um, but in the end, I can't recommend this film enough. This, this is a monumental achievement in silent cinema, in storytelling, in a dramatic piece. And if you're someone who's just starting out with silent films, um, just realize that this is not a typical Buster Keaton film, in my opinion. Yes, there are great, there are some great stunts and some great things that happen, and he is a great technical filmmaker. But this is not a comedy, in my opinion. Uh, if you want a Buster Keaton comedy, go check out um, The Cameraman, Sherlock Jr., Navigator. You know, those are more lo like comedies, so check those out. But if you really want to check out The General and want to see why it's praised so highly... I recommend doing some research beyond this video and check it out. So, yeah, that's about it. Next time, I'm going to hit you guys up with Mockery. Also, if you want to take a minute below, I have my Facebook page in the YouTube description box, and I also have a Twitter account. I also want to thank the 20-some-odd people that like my Facebook page now. You guys are so awesome. I, I know 26 sounds like a really small number, obviously, but... I never even expected to get that many people. I know that sounds kind of sad, but thank you so much for your support. I shall continue to put up content, and I hope you guys are well. So, yeah, if you want to say something, comment below. Any requests, put below. And thank you guys for watching. Peace out.